to our next presenter, uh, Ajwa Sakwa, coming from Community College of Denver, studying chemical engineering. Uh, she's hoping to transfer to a four-year university to finish um, her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering. Um, so to start, I would like to thank Marina Vance for letting me work in her lab, as well as my mentors and the RESIS program team for allowing me to be part of this program, as well as the other research, research, Rex, I'm sorry, <laughs> Rex interns for being very supportive this summer. Um, so my project is on indoor air quality and characterizing emissions of volatile part particulate matter from cooking oils. Um, so next slide. Um, so to start, um, basically the project was to um, characterize the particulate matter from cooking oils, as I just said. It's an introduction to understanding um, aerosols and how particulate matter may affect human health from common household products and how um, they can negatively affect um, climate change, they can negatively affect climate, human health, and um, based on their size and chemical composition. So um, what is particulate matter? Next slide. Particulate matter can travel in aerosols and they can be um, in liquids or solids. They can come from certain activities from, as you oh, you will see cooking, um, household products and stuff like that. They can be as small as um, say dust, um, pollen, dirt, and they can get um, as large as like say fine sand and stuff like that. Um, Um, next slide. So they have um, particular matter depending on um, their chemical composition and like their sizes. The smaller they are, the more dangerous they can be because they can travel into um, the lungs, bloodstream, etc. And um, exposure to them can cause short term effects like um, uh, cold like symptoms like sneezing, coughing, and runny nose, and then long time, um, long term. Um, effects like cardiovascular disease and asthma. And the environmental effects could include like haze or um, acid rain, and as well as erosion of certain um, materials and rocks and stuff. Uh, next slide. And this is like a closer look at how they can look like. And since they're very small, we need certain um, instruments to study them. So for this lab, basically, we took different types of oils, um, canola, vegetable, peanut, and, um, and the lard animal fat, and we heated it up on a frying pan. If you look at the top right corner of the photo over there, and we, um, as we heated it in the frying pan with the humid, um, the oils were evaporating into the air. And this little device in the left corner, bottom left corner is a thermodenuder. And what it does is it, as the aerosols um, evaporate into the air, it takes it in and then it heats up the aerosols and separates them based on their sizes and then transfer it to the, um, to this other, um, these other machines that we will talk about in the next slide. In the bottom right corner, there is um, the frying pan and then the thermocouple, which is a measuring, um, a therm it's like a, sorry, it's a, it's a temperature regulating device and it helps regulate the temperature of the oil. Next slide. So after the oil, um, the aerosols are passing passed through the thermodenuder, they go to these two devices at the bottom right corner. We have here on the left the SMPS, and then on the right corner the APS. The SMPS is um, uh, scanning mobility particle sizer, and the APS is aerodynamic particle sizer. And their job is to basically count, collect, and measure the particles. And then as well as take up the volume of how much space they take up. Next slide. 
And so the results that we got from this, um, this project can help from regular kitchens to a, a large industrial kitchens. And um, as well as I mentioned before, like in future projects, it can help with the climate. So what we got so far was that as the, uh, the oils reached 75 degrees Celsius, as you can see in the, um, as the thermodenuter reached 75 degrees Celsius, the oils decided, um, the oils evaporated into the air and almost disintegrated, or they pretty much disintegrated. So on the x-axis, you can see the thermodenuter temperature is being set to um, from zero to 21 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. And um, so 100, 150 degrees Celsius and up was to um, emulate how uh, regular um, industrial kitchen, like deep frying temperatures. And um, on the y-axis is DV D log. And it was to, that's the concentration of how much, like the air, how much space the aerosols took up. And if you look at the second graph, the red line uh, is basically the same as the graph above, but in a, but more comprised. And you can see that this is for canola oil. And it, you can see that there was also black and brown car carbon emitted from the oil at the same time. And so um, I was thinking that this could be due to the fact that since oil, their chemical composition has um, a lot of carbon. So probably that's also where it came from. As okay, well seven, as- Seven minutes, Ajwa. Okay. Next slide. And if you look at these graphs, this graph is basically showing how as the thermodynamic got hotter, the aerosols, their dynamic, their diameter got smaller. So as they heated, they evaporated more and more. And so the x-axis, dp, nm, is, um, that's the diameter of the aerosol particles. And then the dvd log, the y-axis, was um, how much concentration the aerosols took up. And so the red was the 50, uh, was when the TD was off. So it's showing as it, the graphs go smaller and smaller is the increase in temperature. Next slide. And so what's next is um, probably going to, they're probably going to study more about the black and brown carbon that coexists with, that um, coexists with the oil as it was evaporated and as well as the effects of what they can do to human health and the environment. So far, we know that black and brown ca carbon coexist together and they're um, due to combustion from certain household activities and other activities as well. Um, black carbon is classified as uh, particular matter 2.5 micro micrometers, which is like pretty small. And so it can affect like the lungs, the brain, and then heart disease, it can affect heart disease as well as the environment when it uh, evaporates into the air. It can um, increase climate change and as well as um, melting of ice caps and stuff. Next slide. Next slide. Any questions? Okay, thank you so much, Ajwa. Uh, what other processes in the kitchen might contribute to air particles? For example, like chopping stuff up. <laughs> so, like uh, from like the stove, that can also um, the heating, the heat from it can also uh, contribute to like air particles. So that's what I that's from my research. That's what I found out like online. Okay. And Lucas, real quick question. Hey, um, as far as the health effects of these um, particulates, were you mm -hmm. looking at? Um, concentrations associated with people being indoors or um, were you assuming that this was going out into the atmosphere and, and um, messing people up out there? Uh, thank you. Thanks for the question. Um, so it was more of like, so to start it's for indoors and then later on it's to understand how it could affect people outside, both with the environment and stuff. So it ties in together, that answers. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next presenter.